Welcome to Cinema Plus. This is the story about a poor yet passionate young man who falls in love with a rich young woman, giving her a sense of freedom, but they are soon separated because of their sexual difference. Today, I'm going to explain to you a movie, The Notebook, from 2004. Spoilers ahead. Behind every great love starts with a great story. The Notebook begins with a man in a nursing home reading a story to a woman. The story is about two young lovers, Alan Hamilton and Noah Callahan, who met one day at a carnival. Although the two are falling in love, Alan's parents forbid the relationship and move Alan away. After waiting for a sign such as letters from Noah for years, Alan met Lon and becomes engaged. As teenagers, Alan and Noah begin a whirlwind courtship that soon blossom into tender intimacy. The young couple is quickly separated by Alan's upper class parents who insist that Noah isn't right for her. Several years pass, and when they met again, their passion is rekindled, forcing Alan to choose between her soulmate and class order. In a modern day nursing home, an elderly man named Duke begins to read a love story from his notebook to a female fellow patient. The story begins in 1940s at a carnival in Seabrook Island, South Carolina. Local country boy Noah Calhoun sees 17 years old Harris Allen Hamilton for the first time smitten. She continuously refuses his persistent advance until their well-meaning friends lure them together. They then get to know each other on a midnight walk through empty Seabrook. Noah and Alan spend an idyllic summer together. One night, a week before Alan is to leave to town, she and Noah go up to an abandoned house called the Winston Plantation. Noah tells her that he hopes to buy the house and Alan makes him promise that the house will be white with blue shelters and a walk around porch and a room that overlooks the creek so she can paint. They intend to make love for the first time but are interrupted by Noah's friend Finn with the news that Alice's parents have the police are looking for her. When Alan returns home, her disapproving parents ban her from seeing Noah again. Alan fights with Noah outside and two decide to break up. Alan immediately regrets the decision but Noah drives away. The next morning, Alan's mothers reveal that they are going home that morning. Alan frantically tries to find Noah but is forced to leave without saying goodbye. The Hamiltons then send Alan to New York where she began attending Sarah Lawrence College. Noah, devastated by his separation from Alan, writes her one letter a day for a year only to get no reply as Alan's mother keeps the letters from her. Noah and Alan have no choice but to move on with their lives. Alan continues to attend school whilst Noah and Finn enlist to fight in World War II. Finn is killed in a battle. Alan becomes a nurse for wounded soldiers. There, she meets the wealthy Lon Hamel Jr., a well-connected young lawyer who is handsome, sophisticated, charming, and comes from the old southern money. The two eventually become engaged to the joy of Alan's parents, although Alan sees Noah's face when Lon asks her to marry him. When Noah returns home, he discovers his father has sold their home so that Noah can go ahead and buy the Winston plantation while visiting Charleston to file some paperwork. Noah witnessed Alan and Lon kissing at a restaurant, causing Noah to go a little crazy, convincing himself that if he fix up the house, Alan will come back to him. Whilst trying on her wedding dress in the 1940s, Alan is subtle to read about Noah completing the house in the style section of a relic newspaper and fame. She visits Noah in Seabrook and he invites her to dinner, during which Alan tells Noah about her engagement. Noah questions whether Alan's future husband is a good man and she reassured Noah that he is. Later in the evening, Noah invites Alan to come back tomorrow. The next morning, Alan and Noah go rowing at a nearby lake and began to reminisce about their summer together. A rainstorm starts, Noah rows to shore, where Alan demands to know why Noah never wrote to her. After the revelation that Noah had indeed written to Alan, they share a passionate kiss before making love into the night. The next day, Alan's mothers appear on Noah's doorstep, telling Alan that Lon has followed her to Seabrook after Alan's father told him about Noah. Her mother takes Alan out for a drive to show her that there had been a time in her life where she could relate to Alan's present situation. On returning to Noah's, she hands her daughter the bundle of 365 letters that Noah had written to her. When alone, Noah asks Alan what she is going to do. Alan is confused and confesses that she doesn't know. Noah asks her to just stay with him, admitting it is going to be really hard, but he is willing to go through anything because he wants to be with her. Confused as ever, Alice drive away. Alice drives to the hotel and confesses to Lon, who is angry but admits that he still loves her. He tells her that he does not want to convince his fiance 
that she should be with him. But Alan tells him he does not have to because she already knows who she wants to be with. In the present, it is made clearly that the elderly woman is Alan suffering from dementia which has stolen her memories and Duke is her husband. Elderly Alan suddenly remember her past before she and Noah joyfully spend a brief intimate moment together. After originally finding out about her illness, she had her step written their story in a notebook with the instruction for Noah to read this to me. I will come back to you. But soon, Alan relapsed, losing her memories to Noah yet again. She panicked and has to be sedated by the attending physician. This proves to be too difficult for Noah to watch and he breaks down. And the next morning, Noah is found unconscious in bed and he's rushed to the hospital. He later returns to the nursing home's intensive care ward. He goes to Aaron's room later that night and Alan remember again. The next morning, a nurse finds them in a bed together, having both died peacefully, holding each other's hands. It was a magical summer. <laughs>